the reason I do judo is because I don't have to make any adaptations on the mat. The only adaptation is you got to come and grab me and that's it. You know, it's, I think judo is the most real sport for people who are blind. I mean, if you're going to go, you know, to that level of playing on your peers level, judo is on your peers level. No other sport is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can try to modify it all you want, but you know, the blind basketball guys aren't playing against sighted basketball guys. You're going white, okay? Hey, Maurice, the judges, the, the reps gonna help him. So just reps gonna help him? Back. Okay, cool. This inside you're giving me, check that out. Yes, about to go. I live off of Boulevard. Boulevard is a large street. I'm going down the Boulevard. No other cars on the uh, on the street other than myself. And I'm driving like I'm watching a tennis match. I'm, my head is going back and forth. And I'm like, you know what? I can't. And that was the last day that I drove. I was like, I can't do this. I might, you know, forget endangering me. I might endanger. What if a child runs out in front of me? Cleaning. Uh, shaving, uh, those kind of things are were, were pretty hard initially because you, you want to use your vision, you know, because that's how you've been programmed all your life to use your vision. But you just have to find other ways to do it and not to do it visually. And now um, changing batteries, uh, you know, in the remote or fixing something, you know, like uh, hammering, I do it by feel. Where I have like an order system, so I do a lot of things in orders, like a lot, like my house is very orderly, so, you know, like the vitamins that I take are all in a certain line, so I know, you know, what they are by the feel of the, of the lid or the location of it, so that I'm not, you know, taking something extra that I don't need or something different, you know, and try to keep them separate. I was, uh, you know, fat kid with glasses on and I got picked on a lot. And so going to school and being with my peers sometimes was difficult because people could not understand why I reached out and touched somebody or I would touch your shoulder and not follow along or those kind of things. So it was getting to bridge other people's gaps. 
I have what's called Lieber's congenital amaurosis. It's a congenital eye blindness. It's very rare. It's not, it's getting less rare, but it's still pretty rare. You actually need two copies of the gene. Both my mother and my father have a copy of this gene and I got the full copy. And the full copy leads to visual impairment. I was born visually impaired. Um, I wore glasses. I had about 2,400 until I was about 17. And then from about 17 to 23, I went through a dramatic visual change where I was able to see my feet to where I couldn't see my feet. Um, in the past six or seven years, I've you know gradually lost more vision and I have what's called light form perception now. And um, it's, it's, something and I'm you know I'm not bitter about it or angry because I, I'm angry at that I can't find something but you have your own daily frustrations. Repeat button library button share dip about button take repeat button library button that repeat button say the last no pictures taken Take a picture one is large black video camera. So it told me that, you know, that's what I took a picture of. It basically told me it was a large black video camera that you're holding. I don't get to train with a lot of women here, so that's, um, that's one of the downfalls. Um, I think you know, it's sometimes, you know, it's, it's something I wish I had more of, just more female bodies to work with, because there's, there's a little bit of a difference, but, you know, I just try to take advantage when I go to training camps and, um, you know, just try to work with as much as I can, but you, like, you just, you just always learn from everywhere you go. You just, you know, always can learn something. And I think that's what's fun about judo is there's always just something new to learn at every practice you go to. The like, same way I might do a choke, you know, I can learn three different techniques that can make it more effective. Um, that's kind of what our club is known for, is choked, so I think <laughs> since they've decayed, it's choked me about 11,000 times. <laughs> two, go, rope, deep, punch, two, to the other side. <laughs> Three, <laughs> can't do it. Pitch, go, three, go, rope, deep. I, I was born blind. Um, I pretty much I can see I'm considered a B1, and um, I pretty much can't really see that. It's just light and shadows, and um, enough to get me in trouble if I want to be cocky and use it. <laughs> I break right here this arm. Do I dig to his head? If I don't do that to his head, I leave his head there and I go like this. Look, look how strong he is. If I go here, if I make the step, even though I'm not as strong as I used to be anymore, <laughs> the thing is, I made him do that. So what, what is he going to do? If I push that, he's coming back that way, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go that way, push back, come behind. So I was born blind. Um Everybody has stuff that's unfair to them, and you can either just deal with it, or you can, you know, just, you can be really sad about it and have everybody feel sorry for you, and that's probably going to be great, um, but uh, it's not going to really get you very far, um, or you can change, you know, what people would consider your weakness and turn it into to a strength, and I think one of the, one of the big things the ordinary trainers taught me is, you know, just find a way, like, when you're just dying in his practice and you think you can't do it if you just push a little bit further you can find a way and you, I try to do that with you know sometimes with vision you know like I maybe braille is not going to work for me so I have to figure out another way or just you know figure out ways to do things and it might be different than the way you're going to do it you would probably have made this hummus in a completely different way but you know I'm, I'm doing it and it's still going to taste yummy <laughs> you got how many kids do you have four 
kids. Yeah. It's fun. I enjoy it. I really enjoy it a lot. I, Steven's the youngest? Yeah. One's going to graduate from college in uh, May 20th or something like that. And uh, another one is uh, freshman college this year. And another one's going to college. Solution right in the Tayotoshi. Okay. So, here. Well, so you got yeah, open the other for three yeah. of you because then you can catch my shoulder with okay. it. Oh, yeah. It's free. Oh. <laughs> okay. Free. I've only had three. There. There you go here. Oh, oh, down more? No, don't grab the gear. Just I have your hand the shot. Oh, wow. Elbow in his chest as you rotate. Oh, I see. Now, with this one, pull. Look at the line. Rotate hard. Go. Push with an elbow. And take the third step. Back. Thank you. Thank you. It's a side. There's regular Osoto. And then there's hook and hop or so on. All right, I want you guys to work on all three of those. Sasai, hook and hop or so regular or so Got it? Do you want me to go for the or so and then make it a Make it a valid or so and then count it, or switch to Sasai. That's it. The grip, one-handed tile. Boys. Nice. Thank you. Back to the ball. Yeah. Uh, Matt and Ed. All right. Sorry. Good practice today. Go skate. Stays up. Rick. Show me. Rick. Great. Good job, you guys. Stand by me. Feel my technique. Yeah. Since you yeah. can't see it coming. Yeah. 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 Feel better. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Respect you. Yeah. Good workout. Good. I learned that. Get yeah, one leg. Uh, uh, what's it called? So Gary, a lot better. Good. A lot better. Put the leg in there. Bring it in. You know, a lot better. Awesome. Yeah. How about you, Robert? Did you have good practice too? Hey. Monkey boy. Hey. Well, we discussed a lot having having a baby, but. Uh, I've always kind of had some reservations about having kids just because I know my condition is genetic But we've we've both always known we wanted kids so One of the things that scares me the most about like having a child and stuff here is And even when other people bring their kids over is like what what's on the floor that they can find that I'm not gonna see you know or that the vacuum might not pick up or whatever and so, you know, there's childproofing stuff like that that you just might not see uh, that that kind of scares me a little bit. But then I guess being a little nervous about it, I'll just be over, like, <laughs> clean everything. Yep. I had a brain tumor and it was 
causing issues in 2001 of November. I was very sick, neck pain, and I go into the hospital and they at first they just give me pain pills and nausea pills, which didn't work. Gave me stronger stuff. That then I finally have a seizure, and then that's when they decided to do a MRI and discover the tumor. And during the surgery, it caused more swelling. And then a month after the surgery, I was complete. That's what I lost my sight completely due to damaged optic nerves. How did you feel? You know, when you I was happy to be alive. I didn't think nothing negative about me losing my sight. I strongly feel I will see again. I'm not sure how I will or when, I just know I will. What you want to do is give them as much support after a loss to process it and to then move on. And it, and it can take at least a year to get used to the whole change. And it may take longer to learn how to maneuver in the world without sight. But if one person can learn it, anyone can. And there are people who've learned and they are people who can teach them. And, and the more support they get, the more they can lead healthy, normal lives. And that's, you know, that's what the goal should be for anyone who loses their sight, either, you know, slowly or suddenly or whatever it may be, to, to, to learn what you need to learn so that you can keep doing whatever it is you want in life. I'm kind of leaning towards girl. Uh, a lot of people are saying boy, and, but I'm kind of leaning towards girl. <laughs> I was thinking girl myself, but I'm going 50-50 here. I, I don't really have a guess. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> I can't hear you. We're playing defense. No, no, not resistance. We do techniques. I, I try I tried to clarify that with him, but he didn't he didn't figure out what I was saying. Okay. Uh, that's all I was trying to tell you. That's all right. Okay, Chris. Chris will do the techniques first. Huh? Chris. Chris. Let's go. You want okay. to turn me over? Yeah. There's, you know, there's another aspect of me in this competing is that I'm hearing impaired and I need to take out my hearing aids because they can't absorb that type of beating. And so that puts me on a different level. And the, <clears throat> the benefits are that I'm able to tune out, you know, when, when you have all that crowd, when you have those crowds around you, people get distracted by the sound. I've had people get very frustrated with that I'm still fighting them and they, they kind of give up. And, and I don't understand why they're giving up. You know, they just, and, and then I think the frustrating part is I'm fighting, I'm giving it my all, they're giving up and then they're the one who wins. It's like, how did that happen? So, you know, those are some of the things that you have to just accept. I did think that, you know, why me? Because I have a brother who has no visual, has no impairments whatsoever. I have no family members or I have no relation with, with any family members who have any type of disability. So, yeah, why me? Because I'm the only one in the family. Why am I different? And um, I think my parents had some a harder time accepting my blindness than myself. And I'm not sure why, but you know, that's their issue. <laughs> Teaching a blind athlete, I think people get the get the notion that it's it's tough. I think it's how you approach it. I was able to approach it just like teaching the other, our regular athletes, and it, it worked. And at first, it was all, everything hands on. I had to make sure I'd grab each person, tell them, feed them which way they supposed to compete, what uh, direction they're doing their throws. And after that, I just talked to them and, and they get the knowledge of what I was talking about. To learn judo blind, it's a lot more hands-on. Um, instead of the instructor standing in the front showing 
with somebody else, they come up and, and actually physically do the move to, you know, throw you or pin you and actually show you the, what they're talking about. Um, and then as, uh, as I've, you know, learned more, they can just kind of say, oh, this is what I'm talking about, or they can describe it. And it's like, oh, okay, I think I get it. Um, just because with experience, you kind of learn the different things and, uh, and it's just kind of like, oh, okay, I think I know what you're talking about. Let's try this. <laughs> so You can't teach a kid how to win. It's something they have to do themselves. You can show them the way, you can show them the way, the techniques they need to do. You have to show them how to get inspired, how to get motivated, how to get themselves on the right, the right path. But it's themselves. They get the win. Okay, so my favorite throw is uh, actually a left side uh, Serenage. Um I'm a right sided fighter though, but I like to go left side. So what I do is I step in and I get the pull. So you first you step your left leg in, pull. So get the Kazushi or the pull. Let's go, keep it moving, keep it moving. Once you do that, you're going to pi uh, pivot your right leg around. And while you're doing that, this arm is going to go under and around the other person's arm. So, step in. You're low. And you're going to load the person on your back. And then you're going to throw. So now I'm going to demonstrate You got to get your head out of there. You're going to make me tap. I'm going to save you, though. I'll save you. My man! See, I saved you. You get ready to tap. You have tendency with glaucoma, you know, it's really your peripheral that goes. And you have tendency to move your head, to, you know, to adjust for what you don't see. So it wasn't like I was getting into a lot of fights or anything <laughs> or anything like that. So I thought everything was fine. I was driving. Everything was fine. I could, you know, pass driver's tests and anything like that. It was no problem when I had to redo my license, anything. This is how I kind of phrase it to people. For a blind person, I can see pretty well, <laughs> but for a visual person, not so well. Uh, basically, in my, in my right eye, I'm uh, totally blind. Uh, I'm not sure of the numbers, but it's probably around 2,200 in my right eye, which used to be my, my best eye. Uh, but in my left eye, roughly 20, on a good day, 2050, 2060, which is not that bad, but it's so much severe peripheral loss that there's a lot of holes in my vision. You know, a lot of times I, when I'm looking for something, if I drop something or looking around, I have to look, turn my head, back up, look at another angle to see exact, try to find if I'm just using vision.
stay in the line. Right? No, you don't have to. Okay. You're tired. Okay. Hi. I'm here now in Virginia Beach. My first time, I've never been to Virginia. I've always heard about it. This is my second consecutive senior nationals. I've been training about 10 to 12 hours a week. What are we at? We're in Dairy. Okay, so I was looking at maybe uh, some kind of yogurt. They have the uh, the store brand for 217. Okay. Um, How much was the Greek one you were telling me about? Greek is 4.99. Okay. Let me get the roast beef. I hope I like that. Want to get the roast beef? Yeah, I think I'll like that. Is there, is there anything on it? It's roast beef and cheese. Um, there's no condiments on it. Uh, okay. One of those people likes to come and take I'm gonna fill you in on something right now and I don't want you to be biased about it and I don't, this is this is just my experience. And um, because I'm a, because I'm a dual, I'm what you call a para-para athlete, I have a dual, I have a dual sensory disability. They don't really look at, they don't look out for my mutual welfare. Robert and I, we're on our own. We don't have any coaches. They say there are coaches, but they don't do a damn thing. I, I've been to many tournaments where I have to do everything on my own and they don't come up, they don't even come up and say boo. They don't even come up and say, how are you? They expect you to do everything, but they don't, they don't show any, what I, what is jirokai, which is mutual, well, mutual welfare and benefit for the athlete. In Hawaiian, we call it kokua. Kokua means sharing and teaching or helping the other person. And in a way, that's what we do here sharing with our knowledge. The more good tournament competitors we have in our own club, the better our club would grow. If you only had two or three guys that's really good and they don't want to share their knowledge and nobody else going to learn. Uh, I haven't gone for the last three years on trips because at one time I got a stroke so I couldn't travel anymore. Then later on I had a blood clot in my leg so they don't want me to fly. I take these athletes back to BART or take them back driving to their home after after the workouts. Some of these guys, it, it's, just a, it's just tough to be in their situation. But they're here every night. They work hard, they train, so you have to, you have to help them the best you can. Because they're going, this is a sport that they love and they try to do it, be the best that they can be. And I think they, they need more help than our sighted athletes. But then again, like I said, walking, um, you know, bumping into a, a, a pole and saying, excuse me, <laughs> you know, because you thought it was a person, you know, you didn't see it was a pole, you know, or, you know, low hanging branches or, you know, or, or killing your, 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 uh, you know, your, your legs, you know, hitting uh, uh, fire plugs you know, those kind of things. And I didn't even, I didn't know that you could use, I use a cane, I use a, uh, a white cane, but I didn't know that you could use a cane if you weren't totally blind. That was just my ignorance to the disability. The cane is your friend, you know, I, I always called it my visa card, don't leave home without it. You know, because if you do, you get stuck in a place where you might need it. And I still, you know, I, I stick a cane in my bag all the time, you know, and you never know when uh, I, you know, it's kind of interesting, This the gentleman who was helping me out today made an observation that a lot of people, 
because I walk very confidently and I walk quickly and I have a dog, people don't realize that I'm blind. And they don't see that because, like we said, you know, people see a white cane and they see, oh, that's, you know, you know that that person's blind. And some people don't really think about the dog and they go, oh, I think that's a guide dog, but I'm not sure. So, you know, it's kind of a, a catch-22. The most frustrating thing is people just assuming that because they're sighted, that they are smarter than me, or they know what I want, or that I'm just, I'm just an idiot. Like, they'll talk, they're like, does she want this, does she want this? Or if I have a friend who can see with me, they're talking to them, even though the person might be younger than me. Yeah, I started at um, American River College and lost my sight shortly after starting there. Had to take like a year off, and finally was able to go back after relearning how to re uh, read Braille, which I'm still not very good at, um, but using the computer and traveling. And then I was able to transfer to Sac State, and I graduated with a bachelor's in business management and entrepreneurship And uh, in May of 2012, and I've been actually looking for work. I've been looking mainly for like hospitality, hotel, mainly where I could work with people, and hospitality is like one place that I know that I'll be able to talk to people all around the world. I had one interview. It was more of an information interview because I sent out letters and one of the general managers at Holiday Inn contacted me and I think it went pretty well. Uh, I work, uh, I'm an infant toddler teacher. So I work with uh, one and two year olds primarily. Uh, but I, I work with uh, younger and older kids a little bit too. The, I mean, the thing, <laughs> I work with one-year-olds. Uh, if you know one-year-olds, they are never quiet, and if they are, you better figure out where they are. Um, so it's pretty easy to keep track of where they're at and what's going on. Um, and I have color and stuff, so it's easy enough for me to, especially when they first come in the morning, okay, I know they're wearing that color, so I can kind of follow with that. Um, but there are times where I'm all, uh, where did they go? Oh, there they are, okay. So uh, there are definitely times where it's difficult, but for the most part, they're so loud, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> on the bed because I use it so much I don't like having to stand over here so I'll just lay with it on the bed and do homework and get stuff done, read, check email. How does this work? Um, well it has a braille display down here, a professional braille display, so and then I use the keys down here to switch between the um, things in the menu and then it pops up down there and then I use these keys up here to type with. one the kids they were always mean to me they were never really that nice some of them well actually I don't think any of them were um, and so it wasn't a very good experience so um, we kind of did like a lot of running around and learning how to do different um, different kind of ways to knock people over and stuff like that judo stuff and um, the kids there were always telling me, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Um, you're blind, because because you're blind, you can't do this. And then they just make fun of me because I couldn't see, and so it kind of just ruined the experience for me, and that's basically the majority of what I remember about it, so. When Megan was here, she was a great student. She wanted to learn, and I had no idea this was happening. In fact, I didn't know until maybe about six months ago. 
Um, they'd be like, oh, you're blind, you can't see, you can't run, you can't do this, you can't do that. So. And then the parents would just be sitting there watching, not doing anything to prevent it. And there were a lot of kids in the class, so it was hard to keep them under control. There were probably around 30, 40 kids. So no one ever really noticed what was going on because there were so many kids there. I was shocked. I go, I wish I knew this. I wish I would have known what happened because she just disappeared. And I, at, at that time, I thought she was getting a lot out of the judo program we had. And they'd push me out of the way and just um, get in my way. And yeah, we did a lot of running around. Sometimes we'd have to lay on our stomachs and pull ourselves forward just using our arms. You know, I had other, other coaches with me at that time, and nobody's seen this. Nobody's seen this happening. And why? I don't know. It's not that we don't we aren't paying attention. We used to tend to pay attention more of a blind athlete that's on the mat during that time, because she's the only one. And she can't see what, what we're doing, so you have to really be hands-on with them. And I, I was surprised that this happened, and at the same time, I'm really disappointed that it happened at my school. If a coach knows, they could they could do a great intervention. They could, you know, blindfold all the kids and have them have them do it and then talk about what it's like. And because kids don't can't put themselves in someone else's shoes unless you put them in them. They they simply aren't at that stage of understanding. But once you do, they start thinking. And and how the adults around the bullying situation react is very, very important. After London, I didn't know if I even wanted to, and definitely knew I needed to take a break. Um, my knee was hurt. I didn't perform that I wanted to, and you, I put in so much. Um, you know, I did not have a lot of funding. I mean, I was working. Uh, my schedule was chaotic. I was working so much. I was either working, sleeping, or training, and that was my life. And you know. I mean, I don't blame anybody but myself, but I definitely came up short and it was just really frustrating to to come back, you know, here and have I had a big group of people <laughs> waiting to see me here and I was honestly I was so embarrassed to come back, like and they were just proud, you know, just happy to see me. My mom was even out here and a bunch of my friends and I walk up and they're clapping and I'm like, just want to, my head, I, 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 I just wanted to apologize to people and, you know, then it's, it's hard to, to step back on the mat after, after that is, you know, what you work so hard for when you fail at that, it just sucks because you're, you're back on the mat again and then you're like, do I, do I want to invest as much time? So on one hand, I'm super motivated, but then again, I'm just like, do I want Judo is just, it's just it's a beast and it, you know, I know what it takes. I know how much time it's gonna take and I'm starting up my, my business and I've done that before so I know how much that takes and so I kind of kind of have to determine, you know, what I really want and, you know, have to prioritize kind of how I'm gonna make that happen. And, Judo is about feeling. You you need to feel Kazushi, what is off balance, which is called off balancing, and Shikori, which is the fitting in. You will feel that when it's your time, when it's your place to be there, and it won't just come. And it can take years and years of practice. I didn't really see no difference other than the everything's based on all feel now. Yeah, I mean, it's... it was. Because you know, I have to be more aware of where where the person's weight is, and and actually, your people. When I was seeing, I noticed people like to look at people the feet, so that your eyes can pretty much lie to you. So once I lost my sight, I was actually able to feel the person's weight more on knowing the the best direction to throw the, the person. Actually, it's, it's it's funny to catch someone looking at you. I was doing that one time. I was working with somebody in practice, and I was like, "Stop looking at my feet," because I could tell he was like bending forward and like looking. And I was like, "Why are you looking at my feet? Just feel it." <laughs> I think uh, 
I think we, we, we need to spread the word about more people get involved with the disabled athletes, uh, Paralympic athletes, because they need the help just as anybody else. They need the training as anybody else. And I think I get a bigger satisfaction coaching these athletes because it, they want to learn and they ask questions all the time. When you coach an elite team, it's tough because they know a lot of judo and they're good athletes. So you don't have to spend time. You can't teach them anything. All you can do is encourage them at the, at the major tournaments. But with the, with the visually impaired athletes, you really have to spend a lot of time with them, talking to them, trying to get them motivated and try to get them on the right track to compete. Definitely 24-7. Ha! Huh. You're out of work, child. <laughs> and it's definitely much different having your own child than taking care of someone else's. Well, that's true. Reply. What would you like? I'm going to apply for the concierge position. Period. Okay, Mike. Here's your email message to Porter. It says, "I'm going to apply for the concierge's position." Are you ready to send it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Mike, I'll send it. Hopefully that's spelled correctly because I didn't check it.
Okay, Mike, you're going white, okay? Okay, cool. This inside your gear, you take that out. Yes, about to go. Make an attempt to come uh -huh. att attack, you gotta go 100%. I believe that we are all winners by just being here. You know, I, I as a blind, I as a multi-disability person who is blind and hearing impaired, have to overcome that to get to the mat, to get to these tournaments. It, it takes a lot of courage from anybody who competes in the sport of judo to just to say, okay, I'm gonna get on that mat, I'm gonna train hard, and hopefully I've done the best I can. And I think the experience that I always want to get and give away to people is that we're winners. Oh, wow. What am I most proud of? Well, I think I'm, I'm a, I, I don't quit. I, 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 I keep going. I, I'm a perseverer. When I was in sales, it wasn't over until the other person's machine was delivered. <laughs> and even then, <laughs> I was still trying to get it in, trying to, I, 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 I don't, I do understand the word no, but I qualify it. And just like in anything else, as far as dealing with the disability, it's just like anything else. Uh, Marine Corps boot camp was difficult. At that time, it was one of the hardest things that I ever went through. But I could relate some of the part of it. You know, I thought about it. I'm like, this is hard. But it's not as hard as wrestling, as wrestling uh, uh, camp was or, or, you know, some of those tour days that we did. You know, so I had something that I could, you know, base, I had a, um, that I could relate it to that I did and I, and I, and I did well. To me, I'm, I'm really proud of the people that, uh that I was able to coach. Because a lot of them turned out to be real good, good people. Good people and good family people. And I think it's, it's a big inspiration for me when I see a kid that can still take care of himself and still be a good person. I think judo has affected me in a couple of different ways. I, I think it changed my level of confidence. Uh, I was a senior in high school when I started judo and I think that made a big difference in just kind of how 
I decided, I was just like, hey, I can actually do something like this. What else can I do kind of thing? I believe that people with any developmental disability can, if it's looked at as a challenge, can find ways to accomplish whatever they want. But since I've been so mainstream my whole life, my parents have treated me so normally, there haven't been too, too many things that I do differently from everyone else. It just takes me a little longer to do them. I think if they had treated me like I had a disability, then I would have thought that because I had a disability, there were things I couldn't do, but they've always told me, do whatever you want to do. I would think back to maybe the first, my first experience with my seeing eye dog and knowing that I'm going to go out in life and succeed because I have these guide on my side that's showing me the way to life, to go and succeed. And that is what makes me feel so proud that I taken life by, by the horns or whichever way you want to say it out of the circumstances that I've been given in life and, and become so successful in all the avenues of my life I try to pursue. That doesn't mean there are not failures, but that means that I'm proud of myself and who I am. And it took me a long time to love myself. And I think loving yourself and being proud of yourself makes you whole. And I would say that day of knowing that I love myself and accepting myself for who I am was one of the proud days of my life.